we are going to do today is just a, just a quick demonstration of the mixing process and the materials that I use. I keep things real simple and mix it all up here in my 200 gallon tank. The first thing I put in is the cement. And what I have here is Portland cement and it's mixed with fly ash. And I don't know if the camera picks it up, but it's got pieces of stuff in here that looks like cellophane. But that's actually the fly ash that comes from the coal burning power plant. So what I do is I take my heavy things and I put them into smaller portions because I'm not that strong. Cement is really heavy. So this is the equivalent to a half of a 94 pound bag of cement and I have it in two buckets. What I do is I tip the buckets over so that I can get the cement out. Turn on the water. This is a really dusty process. It should ha I should have a mask today, but I'm not going to talk to you through a mask. So I'm just going to do it this way. I have my high pressure nozzle and I'll just get started. All I have to do is rock the bucket and maybe tip it a little sometimes and it falls right in here. Can you increase the water pressure? Sorry about the noise. And continue to tip the bucket, adding cement and using the pressure of the nozzle to mix the cement in the mixer. So that's the cement process. I'll just keep doing that with my two buckets. Very quickly, I'll have this uh, cement all suspended in the water. And that is the object of the lesson. Okay, I've got the cement all in here. This is how I do it. I just kind of swish the high pressure nozzle around and I can feel globs that might need to get mixed in better. So mix them all in. There, that's done. Now what I'm going to do is start adding the newspapers. I've got a stack here that's about 22 inches high. I've changed my... Um, I've doubled the amount of pumice I'm going to put in here, so I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen with the amount of, um, and also I want to take this thing off because it gives me a big shower every time it hits the newspapers. So I'll get rid of that, throw that over there. Okay, now that's much better. I'm just going to add these newspapers. I'm not shredding them up. I'm just trying to separate them enough so the, the water can get in to the middle. And just keep running the water over them as I throw them in. And I do get splashed a lot. That's okay. It's really hot today. It's the 4th of July. It's really hot already. Okay, so I'm just going to finish this up and then uh, we'll do the pumice hey. after. Okay, I ended up putting that whole stack of paper in the tank and there still seems to be plenty of room for the pumice. Just push the paper down in, I can tell. There's plenty of free space, but I think I need a little more water. I just want to bring it up a little higher. There's a line on the tank, you can't see it, but that's sort of my, my fill line. And a lot of it ends up sloshing out, but that doesn't matter. As this paper is churned by the blade in the tank, it's going to absorb more of the water into itself. So I have to make sure I have plenty in there and get a good mix. Okay, I'm going to set that there. Um, ooh, bug went in my throat. This is my pumice. It sort of looks like coarse grape nuts or something. It's a volcanic rock. It's light and it floats. So I just pour it on top. I'm going to use four buckets. What I'm trying to do is... I've got enough water. I am trying to reduce the amount of shrinkage in the block by adding more... more mineral matter to it. And that also will retard any fire, although 
on my flame test, which is on my uh, my 55 minute video, I have a five minute flame test at the end. I can't see how this stuff would burn. I know there are incidents where it has, but mine with a blowtorch for five minutes didn't even have any bad reaction. Okay, so there's the pumice.